reference has become obsolete. We are contemplating a new title. Another presentation from uh, Professor Gottfried Konechny. We are moving close and closer to photogrammetry. As you may have guessed from the title, uh, Professor will talk about from about Beijing to Melbourne and from Melbourne to Prague. He will expound on the trends in photogrammetry. Please, Gottfried. Tempted by uh, Sergey Miller, who has been speaking without slides, because uh, there are some philosophical comments, and uh, congratulations to the many uh, topics he has raised. Uh, when we go to uh, uh, here, uh, the question is from Beijing 2008. These are, of course, the congresses. You have heard the invitation to the Congress in Prague. And last year we have been together. Rakurs made a very nice presentation at the Melbourne Congress. So since that time, we are very well introduced to the global uh, sector. And uh, I think. Uh, uh, this will continue. So, uh, anyway, uh, since uh, uh, ISPRS has, has always um, uh, played a role, it was introduced in the year of 1910. Um, it had, in the meantime, 22 international congresses, uh, and um, they are now taking uh, uh, place every four years. And of course, Congress is document what, where the discipline is going. And uh, uh, what I have said right now, uh, what is progress of a particular discipline? It can go by three indicators. One is the tasks, the second is the traditions, and the third is the tools. Uh, the tasks are very well known. We have seen some of the pictures of uh, uh, 1850 when photogrammetry began. It was Loseda here in France. And uh, since that time we know uh, photogrammetry is uh, a means to record, to interpret and measure the environment by images. And uh, this was, of course, used to obtain local, regional, and global information. Because uh, if you don't use imagery, it became too costly and too time uh, to con uh, consume. Uh, it was possible, perhaps, in some areas of Europe, but not in the rest of the world. Uh, but uh, since around 1900, the mapping uh, a profession was created. Uh, we have then, since that time, the tradition of photogrammetry. At that time, it was International Society for Photogrammetry. Uh, but already at that particular time, we had a section of non-topographic photogrammetry, as opposed to the topographic photogrammetry, which was related to mapping. So, and uh, we therefore, because we are uh, related to mapping, whatever form, even uh, what Mr. Miller considers geospatial information, uh, it's another word for mapping, of course, uh, it's uh, uh, still considered a geodetic discipline. You in uh, Russian Federation you know that very well. Uh, uh, with MIGAIC, uh, the oldest geodetic educational institution since Katarina Vtorovaya. Yes. And uh, so uh, it uh, continues to be of service in mapping in many disciplines right now, uh, in archaeology, in engineering, in medicine, and so forth. Uh, the tools have changed, we know that. The tools, the tools uh, uh, when you go with uh, Kondratyev, for example, you always say you have a technology push that uh, pushes in, we are in the, the cycle of information technology at, at the present time. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, we have started to change the tools all the time in photogrammetry. Uh, in, in 1910, uh, we had the uh, we changed uh, graphics totally. At that time, photogrammetry was only graphic. Now we changed to mechanical instruments, and in the 1950s we changed to multispectral sensors, and now we have, of course, computers and space technology. 
And uh, in the 90s, we are tending toward automation. You see that also in the, the works of Rakurs. And uh, the development of the tools is, of course, uh, rapidly going on, and not only in photogrammetry, in the mapping disciplines, uh, and uh, because of that, because uh, the grass is always greener where the, uh, where the ruble is flowing better, uh, then, for example, I have here a, a, a picture that we have seen uh, uh, the week before last in Stuttgart, uh, where we had a presentation of a, uh, a car automatically driven. And this is all uh, computer vision uh, technology, computer vision community, which we are also using of, because we need it, absolutely. And it's a very complex situation, and uh, uh, computer vision technology can help us. So uh, even photogrammetrists have asked, where are we going? Uh, uh, however, we can also see that photogrammetrists, in their concentration on mapping, uh, have been able to uh, adopt computer vision technologies and uh, we have been able to master computer, uh, computer vision tools. I think Rakurs is uh, that way in the younger generation as we see in the Congress is coming up. And this scenario will continue um, uh, because we will continue to record, to analyze, to classify and measure the environment uh, and what we cannot do at the present time is to do it in real time, but we are coming closer. And this is our uh, technological scientific target. And it is a big, big challenge. So we see that the trends in, uh, from Beijing to Prague will continue. Uh, and uh, I will just concentrate on the types of tools that we have. The tools are, of course, we have seen new optical centers. Uh, Digital high resolution cameras, digital medium resolution low cost cameras with oblique images. You see it in the, so Rakurs is very, uh, very well suited in pursuing these goals. Then you have the integration of laser scanners supported by optical imaging. We have a new range of platforms, high-resolution satellite images with high capacity for global coverage. Here we have seen Digital Globe, one of the sponsors right now here. Uh, satellite constellations for high temporal coverage. Uh, you know, uh, okay, Rapid Eye, for example. Uh, small low-cost satellites which are an option, and we have the UAVs. And of course, we have terrestrial applications from mobile vans. There's an integration process, terrestrial images to be merged with satellite images, I mean, geospatial data, uh, street map, and so forth, it's a very important issue. Uh, then you have new optical sensors. We are talking about uh, the radar sensors, uh, Terrasa X, Cosmos I, Tandem X, and we even go into the hyperspectral centers. Uh, and of course, what's very important is that we don't have the time uh, to, uh, to do that in uh, many, many years like we used in the past. So uh, automation is uh, in the processing chain. We have Ultramap, for example, we have the Pixel Factory. Uh, so uh, we have 3D databases which are coming up. Uh, uh, we have automatic and uh, semi-automatic future extraction. We will hear more about it by Christian Heibke today. Then uh, we have improvement in the speed and quality of mapping. Uh, we have mentioned Google Earth, Google Maps, Street View, uh, Ground Truth, Bing Maps, and, and the attempts of Yandex. And we have intergovernmental efforts. This is supported internationally by UNGGIM, uh, where we try to integrate geodata with statistics officially. And we have geo environmental uh, research by uh, ESA Copernicus Sentinels to get science into the whole thing. So it's a big program. And I'm very sure that uh, the future of photogrammetry within the geospatial community is absolutely is, uh, very challenging. Uh, here are a few of these tasks. Uh, you know them all, 
right now, but I just recapitulate with some of the slides. You can see, uh, uh, finally, there was an integration of the optical sensors. Uh, right now, there is no more uh, uh, Zeiss against uh, uh, Wild, at that time, or Leica. Uh, they're integrated within Hexagon. And you have the competitor is, of course, Microsoft Wexel with the Ultracom. And we have vision map, a novel uh, situation. They're all represented here at this conference. Now, uh, the uh, interesting thing, the medium resolution oblique cameras. This is what we have seen the, uh, in Stuttgart also. It was presented there, the, the various sort of things. So uh, it's not a, a pictometry as a separate sort of a thing, but can be integrated in the usual process that you have there. Then uh, integration of laser scanners, and what's particularly interesting, the combination of airborne and the terrestrial, uh, the point clouds, uh, and uh, processing, and so forth. Okay, uh, combination, high-resolution optical satellites. What's so significant? They're becoming available right now. Not only they're there, and it's not only a new uh, satellite, but uh, what you can see is the capacity they have. For example, Worldview 1 with 750,000 square kilometers uh, per day uh, that can be achieved. And it's going on with Playad with 1 million uh, square kilometers per day. So we are going to have a flood of imagery. Um, of course, we are still limited by the clouds, but nevertheless, uh, we have other uh, sensor integrations that need there. And, uh, uh, and there are some very effective ones on the lower uh, scale, uh, like the DMC3 uh, also. And um, uh, this is the constellation. Uh, if you want to have land use, land cover, right now the question is not only to have it one time, uh, during the year as it's being done at the present time, you, but you need it several at the crop periods. So uh, the answer is obviously uh, a system such as Rapid Eye, uh, uh, constellations for high temporal coverage, even though the resolution is not that good. Uh, uh, the masters in that are Surrey Technology. This is a company that builds uh, small satellites at an incredibly low price for other nations right now. Saudi Arabia, Algeria, uh, you name them all. They are uh, manufactured in uh, Surrey and the launch is being done perhaps in Russia or somewhere else. Uh, they arrange it all. We have talked about UAVs. I think, again, uh, in Stuttgart was a very interesting presentation of the UAVs. We had a, a wonderful presentation right now. Uh, anybody who uses UAVs, he is illegal, at least in our countries. So <laughs> don't make an accident because you are not protected. No insurance will cover you. But nevertheless, it's a beautiful tool. And uh, what was presented, there are some that are almost like, they look like a mosquito. And you can use, can use them in Afghanistan. They're being used at the present time. Uh, so, uh, OK. Uh, uh, mobile vans. Again, I agree very much. The Google Street Map is a very effective tool for updating of mapping. Uh, and then uh, these are the radar systems. It's a phenomenal development right now that has happened with the Tandem X. We will have a, a, a geoid model right now. Uh, uh, we don't have to go to uh, things like uh, uh, the previous uh, and there's a hyperspectral high, high satellite that we have. They are not at one kilometer resolution, but it will be in the, in the hundreds of meters, right? uh, 30, meter, uh, 30 meter ground sample distance. So it's almost like a hyperspectral Landsat <coughs> that's coming up. So that's the future. Automation, the processing chain. Of course, uh, uh, it's absolutely, uh, uh, right now, when, when you have the pixel factory, it has several components. It has a, a space factory, the sky factory, the, the street factory that you have there. It's very interesting developments. It costs a lot of money, and uh, not a private uh, consumer cannot 
for that sort of thing. There's a reorganization. It, it, it's for huge organizations, like in space, who is to do it. Otherwise, if you want an affordable solution, you, go, you better go into a, a lower uh, uh, level of automation, like in a course, for example. Uh, very interesting is the, the ultramap, uh, not only from the point of view of the uh, but the processing chain that you have there. You see, uh, the question is, you can make true also photos with this processing chain. Um, uh, so that means uh, it selects automatically the multi-ray photogrammetry and uh, uh, Microsoft, out of patent reasons, they, they don't call it true also photo. They have to use another word. No matter what you call it, that's what it is, basically. It's a, a map-like also photo for, for cities. Uh, uh, another big progress has been come up with matching algorithms. We had, at one time, we had the, the ordinary matching, which started in the 1950s with Hobro, uh, and it was done with analog uh, techniques, and now we are all digital, of course. And one of the... Uh, uh, advances that came up by the computer vision community uh, uh, has has been semi-global matching. As far as semi-global matching is concerned, it permits dense matching, and in, uh, so it's it's big big progress. And we have to work together with in, on these m uh, mathematical tools. They're very useful for us. And uh, then the question comes to 3D databases. This has not really been uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, settled. Uh, 3D is a problem uh, because the databases, uh, we are two and a half D and so forth. And, but we must also remember that our field is very, uh, 3D is necessary in civil engineering projects. It is, uh, uh, and there are some applications of computer industry that are going in this direction. Uh, utilities management is a very important uh, aspect, and uh, there we need 3D. You need it in industrial sort of things. I'm not going to talk about automatic feature extraction because Christian Heipke is going to, uh, to do that here. Uh, but the question is to increase productivity, absolutely necessary. And then you, the speed of mapping, Yandex is one of the situations. You you know the uh, platform that you have high resolution satellite images and uh, with GPS and so forth. And then you have the intergovernmental efforts, UNGGIM, uh, anyway, anyway, and GEO, they are looking for uh, global uh, uh, land cover mapping. But again, we need lots of improvements. We need not only one cover per year, but we and, and to, to compare from 10-year uh, periods, but we need it perhaps uh, within several times uh, during the year. Thank you very much. This is where we are going, so I think ISPRS is right on, on time with our Congresses and so is our course. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Konishny. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, questions. Uh, your questions, please. I believe that when Mr. Koneshny talks about most recent trends in photogrammetry development and our discipline, it is like an encyclopedic overview, and it's very interesting to listen to. I'm not going to uh, bother Gottfried with questions and tell you that right after the coffee break we'll have more technical presentations and Dr. Sechin will tell us about the most recent trends in the development of photogrammetric systems and I see that there are already will already be many overlaps with Gottfried's uh, intervention. Thank you Gottfried for your presentation.